not work there now it works good morning welcome to worship this morning on this Labor Day weekend a uh, special welcome to family and friends of Helena Pennycook and Landon Johnson who are here for first well no they are not here for the first communion they're here to observe Helena and Landon's first communion this morning so I'm glad you could worship with us this morning um, the slides should guide you through most of our worship service although there's no one up there mystery. Uh, anyway, the slides should be able to guide you through most of our worship service. Is everything good? Yeah. All right, they got it. All right, I'll just, we'll just, we will just press forward. Uh, please know that all baptized Christians are welcome at the Lord's table here at St. John Lutheran Church, uh, so family and friends are welcome to join us for Holy Communion. What we'll do at communion time is I will invite Helena and Landon and family, both extended family and church family, sponsors, to come forward um, for the First Communion first, um, and then we'll kind of, the rest of the congregation will come forward as, as usual. So. All right, I think we're ready to go. So I invite you to stand, and we will begin with our gathering song, For the Beauty of the Earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God 
and help one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. In our first reading this morning, the prophet Jeremiah delights in the word of the Lord, but in the loneliness of his call feels the heaviness of God's hand upon him and God's seeming desertion of him before his opponents. Jeremiah seems to quit his relationship with God, that is, he seems to sin. And God's tough love to Jeremiah says that if, you, if he turns back, that is, if he repents, Jeremiah will be allowed to continue in his strenuous ministry. Jeremiah is strengthened by the simple words, I am with you. In the second reading, Paul presents benchmarks for faithful relationships with Christians and non-Christians. Love is the unflagging standard of our behavior. When we encounter evil, we do not resort to its tactics, but seek to overcome it with good. While Christians cannot control the actions and attitudes of others, we seek to live at peace with all people. We hear the word. And the first re reading is from Jeremiah chapter 15. O oh Lord, you know, remember me, and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone. 
for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthlessness. The word of the Lord. Uh, join me with Psalm 26 reading responsibly. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. The second reading is from Romans. Wow. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in, pay in prayer. Continue to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? 
but what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with the angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This morning the gospel comes to us as we're reminded that Jesus wants us to follow. Jesus calls us to follow. To follow him to the eternal reward won through the cross. To follow him into God's love and mercy. To follow him in a life of righteousness, of justification, of right relationship with God. God wants us to follow Jesus. Jesus calls us to follow him. Don't first get hung up on that cross-bearing stuff, but hear the good news. Luther believed that as we truly grasp this gospel, this good news about God's love, about Christ's desire for us, we cannot help but then truly respond to the faithful and righteous life. And so, the gospel is proclaimed to you so that you might believe and you might live it out. Jesus wants you to follow him, to eternal life, to the love of God, to a righteous life of justification, faithfully lived here and now. But there is this message of the cross. And there is this strange paradox that Luther lifts up for us today. Those who want to save their life will lose it, he says. And I think it has to do with some, some modern heresies of modern church. I guess the modern heresy is the modern church. And the error that we sometimes come to, and Luther has to take some blame for this as he's kind of minimized the role of the church and, and highlighted the importance of personal faith, is that we live in a time where some people believe that it can be God and me. Just me and God. That the only thing that really matters is my relationship to God alone. And the extension of that leads to Lutherans on the loose. You've heard me use that phrase before, right? People who will claim to be Lutheran but are not connected to any body of Christ, to any community of faith, to any church or congregation, because it's about me and God. So I can do that out there. But let me assure you that that notion of me and God without being connected to a body of Christ, a congregation, a church, is unbiblical, and I'm suggesting a modern heresy. Because as the Apostle Paul writes to people, even Timothy, individuals, he writes to those individuals in the context of a community of faith and in a congregation. And as the disciples went out in the book of Acts and brought people to faith, they brought them into communities of faith, in various cities and communities. As Jesus wanders around the countryside, proclaiming the kingdom of God, he calls people into relationship with him, 12 and 70 and more than that. It is not just you and God and nobody else. But it is us and God formed by the love revealed in Jesus Christ. And this is so contrary to our rugged individualism that it seems that we would lose our life if we gave up such a notion. So Jesus says to us across the centuries, those who want to save their life will lose it. 
those who lose their life for my sake will find us. Those that commit themselves to the body of Christ, who are involved in a community of faith, who are connected to this proclaimed word in a place where it is embodied, they will find life. You will find life. For we need one another. And we are stronger and better together as a community of faith. And even when it's not just a community of faith. This weekend we, we remember Memorial Day. Oh, do we commemorate it? Do we memorial? I'm not sure exactly. But anyway, we have a, a, sorry, a Labor Day. See, I'm getting my memorials and my labors turned around. Do we memorialize Labor Day? And part of what we remember on Labor Day weekend is the importance of organizing workers. Seated in these pews, I know there are many who have reaped great benefits from being part of organized workers. You can't deny it. It was a, a wonderful time for labor just some decades ago. But now for some reason we've decided that labor unions are bad and organized workers are not really what we want. But it's our togetherness it's our working together in community that makes possible the greatest goods. And that's just out in the secular world. Jesus has called us to be his body in the world. So the church is called the body of Christ. And the essence of that relationship in the body is love. Another secular example. To be alone in Houston today puts you in great jeopardy. But to be connected to a community that is in Janesville, and that is in, in New York, and is in Florida, that is providing assistance through the government at work, which is us at work, makes a difference in people's lives. We are better together. We are better when we are a community. Likewise in the church. We are better when those who have gifts offer the gifts to strengthen the whole. That's what Paul's getting at here in this reading from Romans. Let love be genuine. The essence of our strength is our love for one another. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Isn't this the following of Christ? Isn't this what it means to follow Christ? And the danger is that the love that we have will turn in on ourselves or those who are most close to us. Jesus says, reach out in love to those you meet and those you have not yet met. Love. Because it's not just you and God, but us and God and the world God loves. Unless it just kind of is high and abstract. Paul reminds us what love looks like. And it's important to be reminded of the concrete expressions of love. You hear it at weddings. But it's not primarily about weddings. It's about Christians. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. 
love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. It's nice to kind of have an abstract notion of love, love isn't it? Because patience and kindness and not being envious or boastful or arrogant, those are much harder than just having an abstract bit of love. That is how we grow into the body of Christ. That is how we follow this one who wants us to follow to the promises of God and to a full life here. It is wrong to think merely in terms of me and God, you and God, and no one else. For God forms us into a body. It is part of God's work in the world. You are that body of Christ. Individually members, but blessed to be together. Come, follow Jesus Christ, and find life. Amen. God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, we pray for the church and its mission. Make your church ready to lose its life for your sake. United in service, sustain it in suffering, and let its love for others be genuine. Hear our prayers of thanksgiving for the anniversary of this week of the baptism of James Lee, Timothy Wright, Devin Hergers, Blake Ruiz, Colin Ruiz, Jennifer Yeomans, Maxwell LeCary, Brandon Waples, Ra Ronald Enocenti, and Emilia LeCary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the earth and its well-being. Make us mindful of the gifts you have labored to give us and inspire us to commit ourselves to their care. Be present with those affected by flood and fires and other natural disasters across town, across the country, and around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the nations and their leaders. Overcome evil with good. Show us how to live peaceably with all. Teach us how to love our enemies. We pray for peace in the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and the Far East. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need. Provide for the hungry. We pray for those without homes and without shelter. And those who help provide care. Rescue the persecuted. Bless those who advocate for fair and safe working conditions and for just and livable wages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for this community and its ministry. Move us to preserve in prayer, to persevere in prayer, to extend hospitalities to strangers, to rejoice with those who rejoice, and to weep with those who weep. We pray especially for Ellie, Bob, Patricia, Sarah, Alex, Norman, Nancy, Marlene, Mark, Nona, Kyle, Susan, Shannon, Jessica, Bud, Michelle, Elaine, Wanda, Rick, Luke, Jean, Rachel, Doris, Duane, Richard, Elsie, Sandy, Terry, Arlene, Patty, Diane, Phyllis, Maddie, Betty, Connie. And those we name now, silent or alive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Alpha and Omega. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest from their labors. Keep us in union with them until we are joined around your throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with our brothers and sisters.
right, I'm going to call you back to your seats. You know, you can do this exact thing at the very end of service, too. Like, you don't have to get out the doors. You can kind of sit and visit. And it's wonderful. I, I, I always struggle with this spot. I want to keep this energy. But we are going to continue moving on in our worship service. If you've not already done so, please fill in the welcome pad that's near the center aisle as our record of attendance and communion. Pass it to those who are seated with you in the, in the pew. Um, again, all baptized Christians are welcome at the table this morning. Our first communion communicants and their families and sponsors will come forward first. We receive our offering and sing our song as we prepare for communion. Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor. Take them, offer it in great thanksgiving, and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I gotta say some words first before we sing. Today is a special day for Landon Johnson and Helena Pennycook. When they were baptized, God made them part of his household, the family we call the church. As they grew, they learned about their Heavenly Father and what it means to be part of his family. They learned to love others from Jesus, who loved everyone so much that he gave his life for them on the cross. They have learned how in sharing the bread and wine of Holy Communion, we remember Jesus' death and his rising to life again on that first Easter day. Now eating the bread and drinking the wine makes us one with him and brings us closer to each other. They have expressed their desire to join us as we gather around the Lord's table. And so they are invited to participate for their first communion. Landon and Helena, we welcome you to the Lord's table. We thank God for you and rejoice in your being among us. And we pray that you will remain faithful to Christ and his holy church finding joy and strength in his body and blood, the signs of his love for the world. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious Father, for Helena and Landon, who come to their first communion, and for their parents, sponsors, and friends who have loved them, cared for them, taught them, and set them a good example. 
Bless them as they had come to the table of your blessed Son, assuring them your love, and giving them joy in your salvation. Keep them faithful to the covenant of their baptism. And bring them to that great feast which today we are privileged to taste. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in my Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and you have fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit to nurture and sustain us with this meal, strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want, and by this bread and cup make of us the body of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I invite Landon and his family to come forward and, and uh, fill the railing as full as you can, and Helena and her family to come forward and fill the railing as full as, as you can as well to be our first communicants for the day.
please stand as you're able. And if we have home community ministers available, I have elements for their visits and prayers for their sending. Say, Mary. Mary, oh, there we go. Did you have a name on yours? No, it must be this one here. Not yours. Okay, you can do that too. All right. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angels to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen us and those who will receive this sacrament. Give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I was just confused about Kathy because there's two boxes with no names on them, so I thought maybe one of them was Kathy's. Kathy's got her own box. So, um, uh, Can Helena and, and Landon come on up here for just a second? I won't embarrass them too much, but we have things to give them um, that they can take with them this morning. Right, come stand right up here. First of all, I think we need to like. Oh, come, are you okay there? All right, turn around, face the congregation. They're not too scary, are they? Oh, congratulations! So that one says Elena Pennycook. Says welcome to the Lord's table. That one says Landon Johnson. And then here we have some some little chalices made out of owlswood as kind of a memento. Um, of your first communion. There's a little certificate that goes with that. Mom or dad, I want that there. So, some gifts for you. God bless you. Very good. All right. Announcement type things. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to thank the congregation for all of the help that we received this past week. Um, for the men's shelter. It was a successful week, and we had plenty of food and plenty of good company. So thank you for that. Um, they, the men will be staying here at our church for the next week. If anyone is interested in helping with that, they can call the Resource Center um, and volunteer. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for all of your work. If Dwayne is not here, he's probably trying to, re to recuperate. Um, thank you to Dale, who's here every night, kind of one of our, our, our standby overnight guys. So thank you to all those who are involved in that ministry. Judy. Oh, it's September, so things are starting to get busy. Next Sunday is God work, God's Work, Our Hands Sunday. And like we did last year, we're going to be making treat boxes for um, the police and fire departments. So if you would bring treats, um, either cookies, cupcakes, fresh food is really appreciated. And then we'll be making up the boxes after church next week. And then the following week, on September 17th, is rally day so that'll be the official start of sunday school and we hope to see a lot of people there and then the following week will be our empowerment sunday and that will be a ministry fair and potluck down in friendship hall after church so get ready for a lot of fun things busy time september is busy that is good cool. Good morning. Um, I just want to call your attention to an opportunity to give for a hurricane through ELCA disaster relief, and I'm going to share with you another opportunity. So 
I want to talk to you about underwear. I know, it makes about me uncomfortable too. Underwear? Underwear. Underwear, okay. Let's talk about underwear for a minute. I know, I know. <laughs> the, the girls are blushing already. So, um, I have a girlfriend in this area who has a friend in Texas in the shelter who said, we need underwear. So there are different places in town collecting underwear. My girlfriend said, I'll ship it, donate some underwear. Well, it's kind of gotten away from her. It's bigger than she thought it was going to be. I don't mean the size of the underwear, but it's, <laughs> it's bigger than she thought it was going to be. So I am going to offer you an opportunity to put a couple dollars in to help ship all this underwear if you'd like to do that. So this will be back on the table if you'd like to help with that. So Thank plenty, you. Plenty of underwear. We need some help shipping the right. underwear. God. All right. Very good. Thank you. I just want to invite everyone to um, join Landon and Helena. We have some cake and refreshments uh, after the service out in the narthex. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. All right, this week, a lot of other stuff starts up as well. Confirmation class begins 6 o'clock Wednesday. Am I looking for you on Wednesday? Okay, good. Um, Thursday begins our, our spiritual gifts class, Discovering God's Vision for Your Life. Um, we'll be upstairs, pastor's office or the conference room, um, because the downstairs is filled with the guys, um, and uh, evening time is not going to work down there for sure. So upstairs for those who have registered for that class. Let's see. I uh, do hope choir rehearsals begin, um, and they are singing in two weeks. And um, adult forum will begin in two weeks with a movie here, uh, a Martin Luther movie here following our worship service. So those are some things to look forward to. Uh, but I'll let you look through the yellow page. Take note of the things that you want to mark on your calendar. Hopefully many things. Anything else that we want to lift to our attention this morning? Yes. Oh, we have a birthday. Bob has a... No, it was birthday yesterday. 90 years. Congratulations. You know, I remember Sunday school, they had that little plastic church there. And if it was your birthday, you'd have to come up and put pennies in the little church. You'd have to bring 90 pennies and do that in front of all of us. No, we, yeah, we won't do that today. So... All right. Thank you to family and friends who could worship with us this morning. We're glad you could be here. I invite you to stand for our closing song before we join in fellowship and, and food.
have these secular holidays, and I try to put these litanies in to recognize them. Can we go back to the Labor Day litany? A couple slides before this, before the song, actually. There we go. Keep going. Nope. Right. There, I think. Okay. Friends, let us offer our prayers to God who pronounced all creation good, who sent his Son to live and work as one like us, who calls us to serve the poor and those oppressed. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. See, I'm not sure how that's going to work. I thought you would print the whole thing. <laughs> For all those who work, Lord, give success to the work of our hands. For those who are unemployed or underemployed, who have lost their jobs because of changing economic conditions, let us pray, Lord, give success to the work of our hands. For those who work in hazardous conditions without sufficient protection, let us pray, Lord, give success to the work of our hands. For migrant workers and to all who work the land, let us pray, Lord, give success to the work of our hands for all employers, that they may seek to provide a just work environment. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. For those who face discrimination, harassment, or abuse in the workplace, let us pray. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. For those who must balance job commitments with the needs of their family, let us pray. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Loving God, through your Son, you gave us an example to love one another as he loved us. Give us the strength to continue working to bring forth your kingdom here on earth, a kingdom of justice and peace, kindness and compassion, grace and mercy. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now go in peace and sound the good news. Thanks be 